Hello and welcome to Royals History and Stories. In this video, we will discover the hidden treasures in the private piece of heaven of King Charles. King Charles III, like all monarchs, values his privacy greatly. Despite the grandeur of his public appearances and ceremonies, one can find the king in a peaceful retreat, tending to his beloved gardens at Highgrove House in Gloucester, UK. There, he can often be seen on his hands and knees, meticulously trimming his tapires or planting new flowers. Since acquiring the rundown 900-acre property surrounding his historic 18th-century country house in 1980, King Charles has worked tirelessly to transform it into a lush paradise that draws in 40,000 visitors annually. While guided tours showcase the beauty of Highgrove, the 2015 book Highgrove A Garden Celebrated and past interviews with the king provide a glimpse into his hidden life and the unexpected delights found within the gardens. Charles has his own private cottage. While many believe that only kids should get to enjoy secret hideaways, King Charles has his own special refuge. This serene mock home called the Sanctuary is not part of the public tour and is kept securely hidden within the trees of the Arboretum on the grounds of Highgrove House. Designed by architect Charles Morris and crafted by Professor Keith Critchlow of the Prince's School of Traditional Arts and Crafts, the sanctuary was constructed in 1999 to commemorate the millennium. It boasts a charming pointed roof, impressive pillars, and a round chimney hinting at a warm fireplace within. The building is made entirely of natural cob, a blend of high grove clay and barley straw, which creates a muted color that seamlessly blends with the surrounding Cotswood stone. There's a $30,000 treehouse for the Royal Littles. For young children, there's nothing quite as enchanting as a hidden treehouse. The refurbished Holyrood House, originally built in 1988 for Prince William and Harry, has been updated by King Charles for the latest generation. The quaint playhouse, complete with a thatched roof and an oak post and rail fence, is situated in the woodland region known as Stumpy. The rustic playhouse is surrounded by lush ferns, charming toadstools, and even a whimsical tapiary snail. With the sound of the little feet once again echoing on the stone steps leading up to the entrance, this secret treehouse is sure to bring joy to a new generation of young children. There's a wild meadow of endangered flowers that are in doomsday vault. King Charles III has a strong reverence for tradition, but he also has a different approach when it comes to his gardens. Instead of strictly following traditional norms and maintaining a meticulously manicured garden, Charles allows some weeds to grow and permits misplaced flowers to flourish. This approach is exemplified by Highgrove's Meadow Gatefold, a wildflower meadow that teems with life. The meadow is a thriving habitat for numerous bird species and is home to 120 different plant species, many of which are native and endangered. Planted over 30 years ago, the Meadow Gatefold is a fragrant testament to Charles's belief in letting nature take its course. The meadow hums with activity, serving as a crowning example of the king's unique approach to gardening. There are deceptive roses that smell like apples. Do not be misled by the appearance of the espaliered apple trees hanging from the metal arc in the kitchen garden. The sweet aroma of apples in the air is not necessarily derived from the fruit hanging overhead. Instead, it is the sweet briar roses planted along the sides of each post, which bloom during the post-winter months and add a touch of apple-scented charm to the garden. The gardens are a masterclass in sustainable operations. King Charles has made his commitment to environmentalism well known. However, many may not be aware of the environmentally conscious investments he has made in his gardens. The gardens run on solar power, 
feature energy saving lighting and even have a heat pump and ground source heating system that utilizes water from the ground to circulate in the greenhouse hot water pipes. In 1985, King Charles established the Adjacent Home Farm, which operates entirely organically. He is such a fan of the farm's organic vegetables and meat that he refuses to eat produce from any other source and always travels with his breakfast box, which includes at least six types of honey. The King's passion for sustainability extends beyond just his gardens and farm. He consistently strives to make eco-friendly choices and lead by example in promoting environmentally responsible practices. The gardens are a holding for the King's many large gifts. King Charles is the recipient of numerous presents from all around the world, including large statues and busts. While these gifts are well-intentioned, they can be challenging to accommodate in the English countryside. For example, 60 tree ferns gifted by the Monarchist Society of Australia were unable to thrive in the environment. Other gifts, such as an oak sapling from the First Minister of Wales and a rare Manchurian ash tree gifted by the Dalai Lama, present further challenges for the king to incorporate into the landscape. Although this may seem like a minor problem, it highlights the difficulties of balancing tradition and the natural landscape with the influx of gifts from around the world. The gardens have been captured in a suite of music. King Charles commissioned a musical tribute to his gardens at Highgrove in 2010. Composer Patrick Hawes and former Royal Harpist Claire Jones teamed up with the Philharmonia to create a series of pieces inspired by different parts of the gardens. The premiere of the musical arrangement was attended by the King and Queen, along with select guests, making it a proper royal celebration of the garden's beauty. The garden's tallest recorded delphinium was just eight inches shorter than the tallest one in the world. The tallest known delphinium was a titanic, 10-foot, 6-inch tall specimen that emerged in Alberta, Canada in 2017. But there's a strong rival 4,200 miles away, across the pond. In Sundial Garden, a stunning 9-foot, 10-inch tall flower from one of the King Charles's many adored delphiniums. The Sundial Garden's layout hasn't changed much since it was first created by Lady Salisbury as a seclusion rose garden with the exception of a few more outlandish flora selections that lacked only thorns. The 10th Duke of Beaufort and his servants on the Badminton Estate donate the sundial that is located in the center of the garden. If there's anything that we missed or if you know of any other interesting tales, do share in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you for joining us today. See you in the following videos. Goodbye.